Morning San Antonio starts right now. Making news overnight, a deadly night on the roads. A man dies after falling off an 18 wheeler. Up next, why police say he was an unexpected passenger. U.S. military assets are now en route to the Middle East to shore up Israel's fight against Hamas as the death toll grows on both sides. I'm ABC's Justin Finch with the details from Washington. And trending right now on KSET.com this morning, the head of the Alamo Area Council of Governments has been placed on administrative leave. Board members say Executive Director Diane Rath was put on leave after employee complaints. You can read the reaction from the Council of Governments online right now. The cool fall weather is gone for now. As expected, the clouds are back. Some of you might see some showers this morning. Mike has the rest of your forecast coming up. Good morning, everybody. It is Tuesday. It is October 10th. Steph is back after a long weekend. Yeah, it was a nice long weekend because the weather was really pretty. And it was perfect because mm -hmm. her daughter had her birthday. So it was a week long, uh, almost a week long almost celebration. Almost a week long <laughs> celebration. OK, that's enough celebrating for now. And at least we can welcome the rain now. We can. So there is a chance. Mike, where's the concentration of rain going to be? today mainly uh, kind of cut the area in half of uh, sort of from southwest to northeast. We'll see some here in town. The majority of the rain again is going to be down in the southeast. Going to show you radar in just a second. First of all, 70 degrees. And so, yes, it is much, much warmer. Think about it. We were in the upper 50s over the, uh, the weekend and the dew point that number. The bottom number has come up anywhere from 10 to 15 degrees compared to yesterday. So, yes, there is more humidity out there. And one thing, though, with the cloud cover and some of this rain, Temperatures are going to be pretty steady. We'll drop maybe a degree or two in the next couple of hours, then make it up to 74 later on this afternoon. As far as the aquifer, it did go up two tenths of a foot in yesterday's reading, and the allergens still got a bunch of them out there. Mold is still on the high side, and that's probably going to remain on the higher side, just given the fact that we do have some of that rain. So here's what's showing up on radar as of right now, and as expected, there's a lot of it over here in the, uh, the mountains of Mexico. All this moisture is coming in from the Pacific Ocean, and and this is working its way off to the east and pretty much going from southwest up to the the northeast. And that's going to be again the situation throughout the rest of today. So kind of kind of cut the area in half like this. We'll see a decent uh, chance for rain 40 50% here in town. Uh, temperatures all around are much, much warmer than what they were even yesterday. And we're in the mid upper 60s, low 70s around here, and that will continue to be the case. And of course, the uh, dew points are up as well. Now, as far as the rest of today's showers, again, mainly southeast. So take a line from about uh, say 35 all the way back down to the southwest southeast of there. Better chances of rain. Hill country more on the scattered or mm, almost no rain and then mid 70s. Like I said, for high temperatures, a little bit of leftover rain tomorrow morning, then some clearing in the afternoon. Then we start the warm up. It's going to get just basically hot and humid on Thursday. Front comes through, still going to be close to normal mid 80s Friday, and then that's setting us up for a great weekend around here and great eclipse viewing weather as it's looking right now for late Saturday morning. All those details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, RJ Marquez is once again behind the wheel. Don't forget to use your turn signal. <laughs> Definitely not. Um, and of course, a lot of people getting back to work at school today after the holiday yesterday. So we do expect things to get be a little bit busier this morning than they were yesterday. As we take a look outside, Trans Guy traffic moving pretty good in our area right now. 281 at the quarry, uh, up close to the zoo. Traffic moving along pretty good there. 281 San Pedro traffic moving pretty smooth throughout our to start our Tuesday morning. So taking a look at our traffic maps, you can see that there is a lot of green on our screen here. So uh, not much to really kind of. Let you know about it, except there for this uh, construction that we have ongoing here in the southwest side, the northbound lanes of 35 at uh, Von Army. Of course, this was an area that uh, we saw get pretty busy yesterday uh, with some of the construction, but uh, I was looking at the camera a little while ago and it appears as if things have cleared out. Let's see if we can get that camera up there. This is one of them that we have there. So we have a little bit of flashing lights up there, but it appears as if there's not many major delays right now in that area. So that's good news. I just checked with TransGuide and they did expect for uh, construction crews to kind of pick up things and kind of get things going there for our drivers in the southwest side. So things looking pretty good right now and uh, Hopefully we keep it that way and we'll let you know if there's anything else that happens. Mark and Stephanie, back to you guys. Thank you, RJ. 
New this morning, the Bear County Sheriff's Office says one person is dead after he fell off an 18 wheeler late last night. This happened just after 10 p.m. near the intersection of I-35 South and Fisher Road near Pearsall. The Sheriff's Office is reporting that the driver of the 18 wheeler discovered he had an unexpected passenger between the cab and the trailer. After the man lost his balance and fell off into the wheels and was killed. The Sheriff's Department reporting that the 18 wheeler driver stopped and tried to help. The sheriff says the man who died was possibly an immigrant. The San Antonio community showing support for those impacted in the Israeli Gaza conflict halfway around the world. The loss affecting many right here in our community. 200 people attended a solidarity with Israel gathering at Temple Bethel last night. Many have lost loved ones, friends and family who are still in danger. City, county and federal elected officials were there to show their support. We spoke with one man who says his family has been there for generations. I actually had friends, kids killed yesterday, this weekend and uh, niece and nephew and a boyfriend of the niece of one of my cousins uh, have been kidnapped into Gaza. More than 1,600 people have been killed on both sides. The conflict started four days ago. Meanwhile, starting this morning at sunrise, Governor Greg Abbott is ordering flags to be flown at half-staff in honor of the victims in the attack. He is condemning the attacks in Israel, writing, quote, Texas fully supports Israel's right to defend itself against, quote, the war criminals who unleashed this mania. Texas will always stand with the people of Israel as well as our Jewish neighbors right here in Texas. May God bless you all in this time of need. And may God continue to bless Israel during these challenging times. The governor announced $4 million to secure Jewish schools, synagogues, and organizations across the state. Here is a live look at Jerusalem this morning, where it is now 1.07 in the afternoon. Israel is further escalating its war with the Islamist militant group Hamas this morning. Israel has halted food and fuel shipments into Gaza as its military is conducting airstrikes targeting Hamas strongholds. At least 11 Americans have been killed in the conflict so far. As ABC's Justin Finch reports, that's after dozens of Israel dis Defense Forces fighter jets struck over 200 targets in Gaza overnight. This morning, Israel at war. Israel Defense Forces releasing new video showing its airstrikes. The IDF says they've taken out more than 1,000 targets across Gaza as it hunts down Hamas. ABC's Ian Panel there on the ground as Israel's military moves south towards Gaza in what could be a step towards a ground invasion. These are armored personnel carriers essentially heading up towards the front line. We're seeing a lot of men, a lot of munitions, and a lot of movement. This is starting to look really like a country at war. Israel also imposing a Gaza siege, blocking food, water, and utilities into the Palestinian territory. Civilians in Gaza now scrambling to save survivors trapped beneath rubble and caught in the crossfire. Now coming to light, evidence the Israel attack had been months in the making. Video showing fighters training on motorized paragliders practicing their surprise arrival into Israel. The family of 19-year-old Karina Ashayev worried for her safety after video circulated online of her being taken into Gaza. She, wants her, she just wants her to come home back safe and sound. Hamas now claims to have more than 100 hostages and is threatening to execute a civilian hostage whenever Israel targets Gaza civilians without warning. A U.S. official tells ABC News the U.S. is providing intelligence, surveillance and reconnaissance support to Israel Special Operations Forces in its efforts to learn more about the status of those hostages. President Biden is set to give remarks later today about the war in Israel. Meantime, the U.S. continues to surge military resources, including an aircraft carrier and fighter jets. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. Back here at home, Northeast ISD could have a new trustee by the end of this month. The school board needs to fill its single member district two opening. Trustees have now approved plans to interview four candidates in a second round of interviews next week. 
The district still needs to finalize a date. Those interviews will be held in open session so the public can attend. The board plans to vote on the successor at its October 23rd meeting. The person appointed to the seat will serve until the May election. The position previously held by Terry Williams, who died back in August. She also served as the school board's vice president. Republican Will Hurd is no longer running for president in the 2024 election. The former Texas congressman suspended his bid yesterday, and Hurd was the last major candidate to join the already crowded Republican primary field when he announced his run in late June. He was one of the few Republican candidates who publicly denounced former President Donald Trump. Now he's endorsing Nikki Haley for the GOP nomination. Meanwhile, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. has announced he's leaving the Democratic Party and will run for president as an independent. Now, if you plan to vote in the November 7th state election, deadline to register is today. There are 14 state constitutional amendments on the ballot that voters can approve or deny. Some deal with creating or altering funds to support higher education research. Others address taxes, including raising the homestead exemption. You can check your registration status and read more about the amendments on our website using the KSET app. In your morning headlines, the already historic Powerball jackpot is getting closer to the $2 billion mark. There were no big winners in last night's drawing for the $1.55 billion prize. Now, tomorrow night's drawing is now up to an estimated $1.73 billion. The lottery says the chances of you winning that grand prize are 1 in 292 million. No one has matched all six numbers since July 19th. Led by number one overall draft pick Victor Winbenyama, the Spurs opened preseason play against the Thunder last night. First quarter, Spurs scored the first seven points. Zach Collins passes to Trey Jones for a layup to cap off a 7-0 run. That's when Wimby got going. Spurs get the ball. Jones fires ahead to Wimby, who stops, then goes slam dunk. Spurs led 81-74 at the half. Second half, less than 40 to play in regulation. Spurs down by one. Closing second, San Antonio goes for the win, but Devontae Graham's three ball is off the mark. Game over. Spurs lose 122-121. Wemby scored 20 points in his preseason debut. The Spurs will next host the Miami Heat Friday night, 6:30 at the Frost Bank Center. Yes, it is official. Now we need to practice saying it. I know, that's awesome. After but, well, all those years, yeah, right? Yeah, definitely. Well, go Spurs, go. Go Spurs, go. <laughs> 5, 12, 70 degrees. Amazon Prime Days begin ahead on GMSA. We're going to show you some of the big deals that you'll see today and tomorrow. And next, from Army Reservists to the front lines, up next we hear from, for the first time, from those who are part of Israel's massive mobilization effort. We've gotten really lucky with the nice weather over the weekend. And on Monday, today, the focus is rain in our viewing area. And we'll be checking in with Mike very soon to see when we'll see that. We'll be right back. Israel has called up 300,000 Army reservists as its war with Hamas escalates. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, from Army reservists to the front lines, these are the faces of Israel's massive mobilization effort. And the country need more soldiers, and we leave our work, anything, and go to the armies. 30-year-old Hai Shalom is one of an estimated 300,000 Israeli reservists being called up, eager to defend his country. I want to be next to my friends, next to my family. Moshe Abergal was at that music festival massacre where hundreds of people were seen running for their lives. It was a slaughter. People with no ability to defend ourselves. Now he's being called to action once more, but says his reserve unit is allowing him time to process the traumatic event. They support me and tell me I need to take my time to process what I've been through. Coming up at 7 a.m., we'll have more of these stories and complete live coverage from Israel. With your GMA First Look, I'm Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. 517, 69 degrees. Let's look out there with Trans Guide. Earlier looked pretty okay. Now looking at Highway 281 at San Pedro, things look pretty good there. And looking good at Highway 90 at General McMullen. RJ Marcus is in the studio and we'll be getting an update from him very soon. Treat yourself to rich Ghirardelli chocolate and luscious caramel. Caramel squares in a bag and a bar makes life a
bite better. The right age for Neutrogena Retinol? That's whenever you want it to be. It has germ-proven retinol that targets vital cell turnover, even skin tone, and smooths fine lines with visible results in just one week. Neutrogena Retinol. On game day, you see our strength, but we see yours too. We see the strength it takes to get screened, facing your fears while still having hope. Getting screened is the first step. Have fun, sis. Can't stop adding stuff to your cart? Get the Bank of America Customized Cash Rewards Card. Choose the online shopping category and earn 3% cash back. 520, Stevens off all week, and RJ is back on a Tuesday morning. Yeah, yeah. glad to be hanging out with you guys. Yeah. Of course, always have a great time with y'all, and we know that a lot of people are starting their work week yes. and also getting back to school today. So let's take you outside right now, show you a little bit of our TransGuide traffic cameras. Again, a lot of just major construction taking place across the city, and if uh, yeah, especially in the downtown area, especially Cesar Chavez, South Alamo Street, we've been reporting a lot on those construction projects. But taking a look here at Lou 4 10 Jackson Keller traffic moving along smooth there. The 281 at the quarry. Uh, this camera seems to be popping up a lot there. And then 281 at San Pedro traffic moving pretty good in our areas. We take a look at our maps here. You can see that uh, we have mostly smooth uh, highways right now, but uh, I do want to let you know we did just see this pop up on our maps right there. And we know there's been a lot of ongoing construction there. 35 and the Von Army area, but this one I zoomed in a little bit closer. It's off of a uh, new Laredo Highway, so not necessarily on 35, but I'll continue to monitor that as we make our way through our five o'clock hour. Do want to let you know about a stalled vehicle there in the uh, airport area. So again, if people are starting their work week, then maybe a lot of people are taking some early flights there. Just want to let you know we have a stalled vehicle there, 281 northbound at Loop 410. Of course, San Antonio International Airport always gets pretty busy around this time of the morning anyway, so just kind of keep this in mind if you're headed out. But otherwise, traffic looking pretty good there. There's our southwest side camera there, Bent City Road, 37 at Jones Avenue. Traffic moving along pretty well. Hopefully, it'll stay that way through the rest of our 5 o'clock hour. Mike? Things feel great outside. How are things looking? Yeah, but the humidity has uh, come back in here, so that's going to help to feed some of these showers. More on that in just a second. But boy, what a beautiful sunset picture from yesterday. Just a few of those high clouds hanging around. It was great. The extension of the weekend yesterday for the long Columbus Day weekend. Now the humidity, like I said, has come back and you really can't see it too well, but there are uh, plenty of clouds out there. And we do have some of these showers as expected. They're coming in off the, the mountains of Mexico, right in, right around Laredo, and then we're Working their way up to the north and east and this is pretty much where the majority of the rain is going to be to kind of draw a line from say Austin through San Antonio and down to the southwest the majority of the rain will be to the southeast and that's uh, pretty much what the uh, computer model is showing as well so we've got these showers coming on in here and then throughout the the morning hours a couple of scattered ones here and there a few more as the uh, the afternoon rolls on and that doesn't mean there won't be any rain out in the hill country but again the majority of the rain is definitely going to be down to the uh, the southeast and that will be the situation going in through tonight. It's not going to be raining constantly, but just these uh, scattered showers again, better rain here and even a few potentially heavy downpours off to the uh, south and in, in east and that's going to be overnight into tomorrow morning. Looks like we'll still have a few damp roads here again, especially around Pleasanton, Gonzales, Catula, Beeville, Victoria and even through the commute. Then we'll start to see a little bit of sunshine later on in the afternoon tomorrow and we'll get back into the low 80s. But today with the cloud cover out there and some of these showers, temperatures really aren't going to be moving that much much, maybe five degrees on average will be in the low 70s. And again, a couple of those light showers just sort of scattered about the area. And I got to emphasize again, primarily from San Antonio Southeast 74 for a high temperature later on this afternoon. Also with the humidity that's going to be sticking around the next few days in through not only today, tomorrow and then Thursday. Then on Friday, as the front moves through that scours the humidity on out of here. And look at that. We're setting up for another just fantastic weekend and some clear skies. And as we've been talking about, it is going to be great eclipse viewing weather on Saturday morning late. So we've got the rain today back to the 80s tomorrow. A couple of showers left over in the morning. Hot and humid on Thursday. Front comes through 85 Friday and that front comes in here and that gives us that great looking weekend around here. We're going to have more after this.
527, Amazon's two days of deals event for Prime members is finally here. ABC's Andrea Fujii has details in today's Tech Bytes. In today's Tech Bytes, it's Prime Day. Amazon's two-day sale event is underway. Steep price cuts include $250 off a 2020 MacBook Air and $80 slashed from the price of Bose 700 noise-canceling headphones. The sale continues through Wednesday. A trending topic section may be coming to threads, the social media platform competing with X. Topics would apparently be listed as trending depending on the number of threads it receives. The feature was reportedly revealed by a Meta employee who accidentally posted posted a screenshot that was meant to be private. Finally, the company is offering seven years of upgrades for its Pixel 8 phones, along with spare parts for those phones. The move puts Google out in front of a new California law requiring companies to offer spare parts for their products for at least seven years. Those are your Tech bites. Have a great day. And the time now is 528 and 69 degrees for now. Instead of trick-or-treating, some kids are often forced to spend Halloween in a hospital room. Ahead on GMSA, how a local nonprofit is working to make sure they'll still have some fun. Research shows that gardening helps people with dementia or prevent it. I'm Sarah Costa coming up on GMSA. We visit with residents at the Gardens of Castle Hills and how their gardening club has helped them find peace. Making headlines this morning, Israel orders a complete siege of the Gaza Strip as it retaliates for the largest incursion into its territory in decades, and many U.S. leaders are giving their support. We'll see once again the steadfast resolve of the people of this state and this nation to stand alongside the Jewish, Jewish people and the, and the nation of Israel. We stand with Israel. Up next, what's expected during a special announcement by President Biden later today. And looking out there with live cam, 69 degrees for now. I know yesterday I had it off. I felt spoiled by the nice weather we had. And today I'm looking forward to some rain maybe. Yeah, you picked some good dates, Steph, that's yeah. for sure. Good morning, everybody. It's Tuesday, the 10th of October. We hope you had a good Monday and looking forward to a week of maybe getting some rain. Yeah, and, and that's not, I mean, if we can have a couple of days of just sensational weather and then even a little humidity, as long as it gets squeezed out in the form of rain, that's okay. And then another front. So that's exactly what's in the forecast. So take a look uh, outside right now. We do have temperatures that are not quite what they have been over the uh, past few days, especially when you look at that bottom number with a dew point of 63. That means the humidity has come back. It's not like it's midsummer, you know, sort of wet towel humidity, but it's a whole lot higher than what it was yesterday. Temperature right now stands at 70, so we are averaging five, six, seven, eight degrees above normal across the board. So here's what's going on on radar right now, and we've got these showers that are coming in here. The all the moisture streaming across from the Pacific Ocean, across the mountains of Mexico, in toward Laredo, and then coming in here toward Beeville, and we do have a few that are well. Well, almost right around Kennedy. We're going to see some of these continue to work their way further on up to the northeast. And then this is all going to start to fill in a bit more. So pretty much the arbitrary line is going to be right along, say, 35. There will be a couple of showers further out to the hill country. But the further northwest you go, the lesser the chance for rain. Further southeast, the better the chance of rain today. Mid 60s out in the hill country. Like I said, across the board, temperatures are five, eight degrees above their respective normals right now. And we do have more humidity and humidity is going to be sticking around and actually going up the next couple of days. But like I said, that is going to be feeding some of those showers, at least today and early tomorrow. Molds on the high side, low amounts of everything else. Molds probably going to be going up given the fact we do have some of those showers out there. And again, leaning toward the southeastern half of the area for rain. Grab an umbrella, that's going to be the best bet. 74 for high temperature, so really temperatures aren't going to be going much of anywhere throughout the course of the day. We will end up a good almost 10 degrees below normal later on today. It does definitely heat up, though, as we approach Thursday. Then Friday, another front. Then the weekend looks great again. Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, anything going on yet, RJ? All right, Mike, starting to see a lot of little things kind of build up as we get you set on your Tuesday morning commute here. Real quick, one more quick look at TransGuide traffic cameras. You can see that for the most part, traffic moving along pretty well in our area there. U.S. United General McMullen traffic moving pretty smooth here. So do want to let you know about a couple of stalled vehicles that we have uh, being reported at the moment. So this is on the southeast side, Loop 410, the northbound lanes. This is at New Sulphur Springs. 
Springs Road. So around the Pecan Valley area, you can see East South Cross Boulevard is on the other side there of the highway. But again, northbound lanes of Loop 410, New Sulphur Springs Road. This is a stalled vehicle being reported right now by TxDOT. And we still have this stalled vehicle being reported there by the uh, San Antonio International Airport. The northbound lanes of 281 at Loop 410. Now, one good thing is that we're not seeing any sort of major delays or traffic disruptions from some of these stalled vehicles, but still something to keep in mind, especially here if you are headed out to the airport, maybe taking um, an early flight this morning. Want to show you some inbound times while we get an opportunity here. You can see that we have a lot of green here, so things looking pretty good for the most part. Pointing out Bernie's 23 minutes into downtown San Antonio, Bolverde 25 minutes, and then 24 minutes up from the New Braunfels area. But things for the most part looking pretty good out there. Mark and Stephanie, back to you guys. Thank you, RJ. An apparent attempt to hitch a ride on a big rig has gone deadly wrong for a man. He was run over by that truck and killed. Our Katrina Weber is live near I-35 and Fisher Road where it all happened. And Katrina, we understand the truck driver wasn't even aware of that passenger. Well, that's what Bear County deputies told us, that the man who was killed was what you might call a stowaway. Now, he was actually on the outside of that big rig without the driver's knowledge, trying to hang on between the cab and the trailer when he lost his grip and fell. Deputies say he was then run over by the 18-wheeler. When they arrived after 10 last night, the man already was dead. The truck driver, they say, realized what happened, stopped on the highway and tried to help the man, but there was nothing he could do. Deputies say that driver was cooperating with them in their investigation. Now, investigators don't know for sure yet where that man who was killed was coming from or who he was. After that accident, they did have to shut down a stretch of I-35 near Fisher Road, but everything is back open now. Reporting live on the southwest side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Katrina, thank you. Here's a live look at Gaza City this morning. Israel continues to pound Gaza with deadly airstrikes, displacing more than 100,000 people. This after Hamas threatened to kill civilian hostages and broadcast the executions of airstrikes target Gaza without warning. Israeli leadership is indicating that the fury unleashed on Gaza will not likely stop anytime soon. As CNN's Reid Binion reports, Israel's ambassador to the United Nations says Hamas fighters are holding as many as 150 people hostage in locations across Gaza. We have begun, and I emphasize we have only begun to strike at Hamas. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu vowing that military retaliation on Gaza will only intensify after Hamas's brutal terror attacks in Israel. The images of the devastation and destruction from the Hamas strongholds in Gaza are just the beginning. Hundreds of Palestinians have been killed after hundreds of Israelis were killed and kidnapped in Hamas's surprise weekend incursion and bloody assault. Nothing can justify pulling innocent children from their homes, murdering them, dragging them through the streets. New York Mayor Eric Adams joining political leaders from across the U.S. from both parties in condemning the Hamas attacks and pledging to stand with Israel. We will see once again the steadfast resolve of the people of this state and this nation to stand alongside the Jewish, Jewish people and the, and the nation of Israel. We stand with Israel. Those pledges of support coming as Hamas threatens to broadcast the executions of hostages if Israel targets people in Gaza without warning. For Good Morning San Antonio, I'm Reed Binion. This morning, Republicans still have no clear idea who will be the next U.S. House Speaker, leaving a power vacuum in Congress. Republicans met last night at the Capitol, but there's no clear path forward. The vacancy severely limits America's ability to quickly respond to the crisis in Israel. The ousted former Speaker Kevin McCarthy has quickly jumped into the void, positioning himself as a de facto Republican leader. But it's not at all clear if McCarthy could seriously make a comeback or if one of the other Republicans seeking the gavel can be elected speaker. A Colorado dentist accused of killing his wife by poisoning her gets his first day in court. James Tolliver Craig pleaded not guilty yesterday to charges of first degree murder and tampering with evidence. He is accused of lacing his wife's protein shakes with arsenic last March. Now, Angela Craig died at a hospital after she suffered severe headaches and dizziness. 
Craig's trial is set to begin April 19th with jury selection. Testimony in that case is expected to begin the following week. Craig is currently being held without bond and is not allowed to have contact with his six children. 540, 69 degrees. And help for Halloween is exactly what one local nonprofit needs. It wants to make the holiday special for kids who may not enjoy the holiday. We'll tell you how you can help next. Just now waking up outside with live cam. It's muggier this morning. Quite a few, a few more clouds out there. And uh, the humidity is definitely here. Some of us could get some rain today. We'll talk about where that biggest uh, area of concern is regarding some potentially wet weather a little bit later. 543 during this time of year, young patients are often forced to spend Halloween in a hospital room, but one nonprofit is making sure they still have some fun. John Paul Barajas explains their efforts and how you can help. I didn't know what it meant like when I started it, but now I know what it means. At four years old, Gilbert Edda was diagnosed with leukemia. Two years later, he's in remission and got to ring the bell to celebrate the end of treatments last month. We're thankful for the organizations that have been around to help us through it because you just go through the motions and you just put him first. It's groups like the Stay Strong Foundation creating bright spots in dark times. This year, Stay Strong is providing patients with Halloween costumes and bringing a Halloween party to those who can't go trick-or-treating. I'd be staring at them with this big cat head. <laughs> they would laugh. And it, was, it, was really, it was a really cool time. It was very needed in a, in a space like that. For Bryce Fox, dressing up and laughing with other patients like him was more than a morale boost. It was the distraction from the tumor in his pelvis. While some may take the festivities for granted, Stay Strong Board President Debbie Harper says being able to celebrate Halloween goes a long way for those in the hospital, something she learned firsthand from her son. The day before he went into the hospital, he wanted to do something, and so he put it out on Facebook, and he said, hey, you know, we need costumes for these kiddos here because they're kind of isolated. That was three years ago. Since then, Stay Strong has collected Halloween costumes for pediatric patients at University Hospital. This year, their goal bigger than ever, 400 costumes to let kids be kids, even in tough times. October was really fun because everybody looked forward to seeing what he would be dressed up as next. Most of them were superheroes. Most of them were superheroes, yeah. Do you know what you're going to be for Halloween this year? He wants to be James Bond. I think we all want to be James Bond. <laughs> John Paul Barajas, KSAT 12 News. The Stay Strong Foundation is collecting donations through October 22nd. You can donate by texting costumes to the number on your screen. That is 53555. Or by clicking the link on our website at ksat.com. Just about 546, 69 degrees. Look out there with trans guys. Things still looking good so far. Let's look over there at I-35 at Denton City Road. Things look good there as well. We will be checking in with RJ Markets very soon. All right, welcome back. 550 now in Good Morning San Antonio. Taking a look outside Trans Guide traffic cameras. 281 at Sprucewood. Reason we're showing you this camera is because this is one of the closest ones to our airport. And there was a stalled vehicle there, but I just saw text out their hero trucks uh, remove that stalled vehicle in this area. But there's still another stalled vehicle being reported a little bit north of this. They're closer to the 281 410 interchange. And uh, we'll see if we, it's not really causing a major backup right now at the moment, but still something to kind of keep in mind. So something our drivers in the south Southeast side need to keep in mind is we do have a stalled vehicle there loop 410 northbound at new sulfur springs road so doesn't seem to be causing any major delays right now according to our traffic maps was still something to keep in mind and you know what let's go ahead and bring up these gas prices once again we've seen them drop now on consecutive days 302 here in bear county 318 across the lone star state and compared to the rest of the country Gas price is looking pretty good right now, so yeah. I wouldn't, wouldn't complain too much. I've even seen gas prices drop to uh, below three dollars in some places. Really? Wow. Yeah. But three hundred two is not yeah. bad. Yeah, yeah. two ninety nine. We'll take Every it. Every cent matters. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. A yes, friend of a former case head anchor who lives in California, and he mm -hmm. posted yesterday he was happy nice. that it had dropped below seven dollars oh, no. a gallon. I can't hey, imagine. How do yeah. they? I even yeah. <laughs> Ouch. Plus, in California, you've got the state income tax on top mm -hmm. of that as well. How do folks survive out there? I don't there? know. That's a really good, good question. Lord. The walk to work.
Wow. All right. Uh, yesterday, our good friend Yvonne posted a picture and said, yeah, it's going to be a beautiful day. And it turned out to be an absolutely spectacular day. Thank you very much for the uh, KSAT Connect picture. Yvonne, really appreciate that. All right. We are starting off with uh, plenty of clouds around here this morning. We also have a little bit in the way of some uh, some light rain down here to the uh, the south and to the uh, southwest is where most of it is. Just a few of these little sprinkly showers, a couple of them maybe around uh, Quero, Yorktown, Kennedy, more Beville. I say more as far as the aerial coverage, but again, this stuff is really, really light. And then it goes back down to the uh, southwest over there toward Laredo and then, of course, into the, the mountains of Mexico. And obviously, that's where all the moisture is coming from. And then follow that back over there toward the uh, Pacific Ocean. And that's what is feeding all of this. And with this configuration, with the clouds around here, all that moisture coming in, Cloudy skies pretty much all day long. Those few little showers around this morning. We only make it up into the low 70s by noon and then rain chances will start to pick up as the afternoon rolls on. Again, we're not going to go too much of anywhere throughout the day as far as temperatures. Only 74 for high later on this afternoon. So just about 10 degrees on average below the normal high temperature. Here's computer model. And again, a couple of scattered showers, more down to the south this morning, a few of them here and there. Starts to fill in a bit more. And again, the, the majority, and this is what I have to emphasize, will be here down to the southeast, even a couple of heavier downpours. Yeah, there will be one or two of them in the hill country, but much, much lesser rain chances in the hill country throughout the rest of today and then more down to the southeast. This is going to carry over into tonight as well as the first portion of the day tomorrow. Quick check on the upper level steering winds. Again, the huge, huge mass of cold air right up there in Canada, right around uh, Quebec, and that is what is pumping down and keeping us on the, the very pleasant side. That starts to sort of retreat. We get kind of a zonal pattern here. The next big trough develops. That pumps in the warm air on Thursday. Then as that comes on through here, that pulls the front through for the weekend to dry us out. Notice how it's not a big surge of cold air coming in here, but that does look like it is going to be developing another big mass of cold air sitting over the Great Lakes, keeping us in this northwesterly flow throughout most all of next week. And that is then going to keep us at or slightly below normal temperatures into next week. 74 today, 80 tomorrow, 89 on Thursday. A lot of folks will be seeing 90s again on Thursday. Plenty of humidity. Front comes through Friday, clears us out. And uh, boy, the timing of this couldn't be better as far as that eclipse. For the yeah. front, yeah. Yeah, real nice. No complaints for, Saturday for morning. me. Mm -hmm. yeah. Good the good news for you as well. You'll be out. I will be out in Uvalde yes, Saturday morning. They've got a big, big festival, Eclipse Festival, going on all day long, actually. But uh, we'll be out there and doing some live shots because we've got it covered uh, on KSAT.com and on the, the weather app as well. Everything. It's going to be just pop that up if you don't want to step outside. Glasses, glasses, glasses. glasses. Yes. That's right. Eclipse glasses. Thank you, Mike. 554, 68 degrees. And let's look at your winning lotto numbers. Pick three, nine, three, five, Fireball one. Daily four, four, five, seven, zero, Fireball six. Cash five, five, 17, 27, 31, 33. Texas two step, 10, 18, 19, 25, bonus ball 16. And Powerball 16, 34, 46, 55, 67, Powerball 14, Power Play three. It's up to like nine kajillion dollars now. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, the latest on the story I know everyone's been following, the escalating war in Israel, the death toll climbing, including 11 Americans. We've got full team coverage in the war zone, covering the fight from all angles. This is happening as the FBI is on high alert for suspicious activity here at home. We're going to have full team coverage ahead on GMA. In the next hour, GMSA, an important deadline to look out for if you want to vote in this year's election and look at what's on the ballot in November. Plus, Israel's bombing campaign underway in the Gaza Strip in retaliation for this weekend's attack by Hamas, the latest on the ground and what could happen next. But first, the START Center for Cancer Care wants men to know they can also get breast cancer, the signs you can look out for to catch it early. And Trans Guide, big incident, 35 and Ritterman Road. RJ is on top of the situation. An update is just minutes away. This morning on GMSA, a deadly night on the roadways when a man died after falling off an 18-wheeler. Why? Bear County deputies say he was an unexpected passenger. Plus, uh, we heard gunshots. He was saying that he was in a war zone. 
The fate of nearly 150 hostages hangs in the balance as Hamas threatens Israel over the Gaza Strip. What the relatives of those taken are saying this morning as they wait for the return of their loved ones. And looking out there with a live cam, we're at 69 degrees, a little more humid this morning, but still not too bad and expecting rain. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Good morning to you. It is 6 a.m. on your Tuesday, October 10th. Thanks for joining us. We hope you had a good Monday and we hope you enjoyed that beautiful weather. It was fantastic. We knew there was a rain chance this week and today is one of those days. Mike Ostrage is here with more details on that. Yeah, we already uh, have some showers in the area and it's going to be one of those days where there'll just be some light rain pretty much all day long, you know, off and on here and there. And that's going to hold temperatures down. So maybe a good day to, well, we got to go back to work in school. So never mind. I was <laughs> saying sit on the couch. We've got a lot of clouds hanging around here right now. And this is what it looks like on radar. Again, just a few of these light little showers right there around uh, Quero. Uh, not much at all. Yorktown, Kennedy, and then keep going back down to the uh, southwest. And you can take this and follow it all the way over across Mexico into the Gulf, or excuse me, into the Pacific Ocean. And that's where all of this uh, moisture is coming from. Obviously, it's combining with some of the Gulf moisture on top. And so that's why we are going to continue to see not only humidity levels go up, but also rain primarily in the southeastern half of the area today. Temperature right now stands at 70. We may drop a degree or two in the next couple of hours here in town, but things are going to, with the cloud cover out there and the relatively higher humidity, things are going to stay fairly consistent this morning, mid 60s in parts of the uh, hill country. And again, we've got some of this humidity. Humidity is definitely going to be sticking around for the next couple of days. Mold is on the high side, low amounts of everything else. Update account, of course, comes out eh, about 730 or so. Temperatures really aren't going to be going much of anywhere throughout the day. We will only make it up into the uh, low 70s today at noon and then top off at 74 with better rain chances as the day rolls on. Again, primarily if you want to draw a line kind of northeast to southwest going right through San Antonio, southeast of there, better chances of rain. Yeah, a few showers in parts of the hill country, but not quite as much. This will continue overnight and into the first part of the day tomorrow. Then the rain comes to an end. We'll have a little bit of clearing going to heat up before the next front moves on through here and the timing of the next front couldn't be better. We'll talk about that in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, RJ, got a big issue out there, right? Yeah, definitely, Mike, for our drivers and kind of the east side going up to the northeast side area. And we made it through the 5 o'clock hour, uh, basically with no major incidents, but now we have something to report here. Looking at the northbound lanes of I-35. So this is our camera, TransGuide, their camera shot of 35 at Riddiman Road. But this crash is actually being reported a little bit further north uh, towards Eisenhower Road. We'll show you the maps here in just a bit, but we do want to stay here real quick. So you can see that we have at least two of the main lanes blocked here, the right-handed lanes here. And again, this is the traffic that's coming to us is northbound traffic. And uh, right now, TransGuy was moving uh, the cameras a little bit earlier and got a quick glimpse of what exactly where this crash occurred. And it, uh, it definitely did not, look, uh, did not look good. So this could be an ongoing issue through our 6 o'clock hour. Again, I-35 northbound at Riddiman. And we'll take you out, show you our maps here real quick. You see that we're already sort of um, indicating some delays here in our area. So again, this crash taking place there a little bit further up from Riddiman Road at Eisenhower Road. And again, uh, you could already saw from the trans guy traffic shot that it was already causing a pretty good delay for our drivers there. But traffic for the moment is still getting through in that area. But you may want to think about some alternate routes. I'll try and find some of that information for you here in just a bit. The rest of the city, things looking pretty good for the rest of our drivers. Um, this crash right there is being reported off of the highway there, 35 on New Laredo Highway. So it doesn't seem to be causing any major major uh, delays or incidents. Let me see if I could backtrack here again to our TransGuide traffic shot. This is the biggest thing we're following right now. We have northbound lanes of 35, at least two main lanes there that are being closed at the moment at Riddiman, Eisenhower Roads. Keep this in mind if you're headed out right now. Mark and Stephanie, back to you guys. Thank you, RJ. New this morning, the Bear County Sheriff's Office is saying that a man is dead after he fell off an 18-wheeler late last night. This happened just after 10 p.m. near the intersection of I-35 South and Fisher Road near Pearsall. The sheriff's office is reporting that the driver of the 18 wheeler discovered he had an unexpected passenger between the cab and trailer after the man lost his balance and fell off into the wheels and was killed. The sheriff's office reporting that the 18 wheeler driver stopped and tried to help. The sheriff also says the man who died was possibly an immigrant.
But right now we're taking a live look at Tel Aviv, Israel this morning, where it is uh, about five minutes past two in the afternoon after the country declared war against Hamas over the weekend. It started with a massive terrorist attack by the Palestinian militant group. So now the eyes of the world are watching to see what happens next. In the meantime, countless families remain terrified with people trapped or missing in the conflict. As ABC's Andrea Fujii reports, we're hearing from mothers, fathers and children desperate to reunite with their loved ones. She wants her, she just wants her to come home back safe and sound. As the war between Israel and Hamas intensifies, the fate of up to 150 Israeli hostages hangs in the balance. Uh, they were taken from their home, from their beds. An Israeli mother, who asked not to be named, is pleading for the return of her sons, ages 12 and 16. I want my children back home. <laughs> I want them to fight each other. I want them to annoy each other. I want them to get on my nerves again. I want them back. I want them to be back sleeping in their beds. She describes the last phone call with her boys, which came just as militants were kidnapping them from a safe room. And my youngest, who's only 12, saying to them, don't take me, I'm too young. And that was it. The line cut off. That was the last time I heard from them. This young woman's father-in-law is missing. He was trying to rescue his younger daughter at that music festival in the desert when they lost contact. We spoke to him last at 8.48 in the morning on Saturday morning. Uh, we heard gunshots. He was saying that he was in a war zone in the car, so we have no idea where he is, and we're just praying that he comes home soon. And our David Muir speaking with a young dad going through the unimaginable. He watched on video as his wife and two little girls were dragged away by militants. I recognized them immediately and uh, I saw the video twice. In the second time, I couldn't watch anymore. He has not heard from his wife or daughters since, but he says her cell phone was pinging from Gaza. Uh, how are you staying so strong? I don't know. I guess when you're a parent, you have no choice. Andrea Fuji, ABC News, New York. Well, happening today back here at home, San Antonio International Airport is starting construction on what's being called a new ground load facility. The project will add three new gates for our airport and has paid through through a $20 million grant from the Federal Aviation Administration. The project will allow new routes and help airlines increase the number of flights in and out of the Alamo City. And trending right now on KSET.com, the head of the Alamo Area Council of Governments has been placed on administrative leave. Board members say Executive Director Diane Rath was put on leave after employee complaints. You can read the reaction from the Council of Governments online right now. 608, 69 degrees. And still to come, Amazon's two days of deals for Prime members is here. What you need to know before 630. Plus, Spurs rookie phenom Victor Wimbenyama put on a show at last night in his NBA preseason debut. We've got highlights from OKC and reaction from Wimby coming up. And the START Center for Cancer Care wants men to know they can also get breast cancer. After the break, what you can look for to find it early. Back to work, back to school for everybody today. Outside with live cam, we might see some sprinkles today here or there. Mike has your bus stop forecast straight ahead.